Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part 18 in a series of videos all about the metal turning lathe. In this episode or this instalment, I'm going to talk all about parting off. Parting off is probably the most fiat process of any on a metal turning lathe. Uh, rightly so as well because there's so many things that can go wrong, especially on a small lightweight lathe. I can already people comment and saying, John, you haven't got a small lightweight lathe. True, but I did have, and I have done plenty parting off on small hobby lathes. Uh, the processes are exactly the same, the thieves are exactly the same. What I demonstrate on here stands true for any lathe. Right, that's enough talking. I'll bring the camera in, I'll show you the lathe tool that I use nearly all the time for parting off, and I'll show you one or two variations on the, the tool that I use. This is the tool holder you'll see me use all the time. That's the, the blade there, and there are the tips there. It was quite expensive, but basically, with parting off tools, you get what you pay for. The tip is 2mm wide, so it's a nice, fine cut. There's a special tool there that, that goes in that little hole there. And when you press down on there, it levers them apart and you slip a new insert in. The blade's got two ends, so you've got two chances because what happens is if you crash it and you jam it, it tends to bend down and actually snap that off or bend that. That's enough of what can go wrong. These cut really well. You can cut fairly quickly with them, but you do need quite a bit of power. So that's what I use all the time, and I'm sure you've seen it work. I will demonstrate it again as we get into the video. This is another one, once again with an insert. This one's 3mm wide, so it's a broader cut. Different type of holder. There's a little Allen key in the end, pulls that wedge down. That's what holds the blade in place. This is more the, the hobbyist type of blade. That's a high-speed steel blade. Need a section on the end of it. That's fitting a little hole like that, which goes into the big tool holder of my lathe. This is good, it does do the job. The end's actually ground to a, not a point, but it's got a curve on it. I tend to grind mine flat, but at a slight angle. I'll show you what I mean a little bit later on. Here's another one. It's actually a hole that I made. It's a, it's a tool hole that I, I got given or I bought, and I've welded it a, onto a tool holder that wasn't much use and that does work quite nicely as we'll get to see later on. The three most important things about parting off are probably rigidity, rigidity and even more rigidity. The stiffer and stronger and shorter you can make the setup the better. The tool must be on centre height, the tool must be at 90 degrees to the job, I'll set that up next. You also only need enough blade sticking out to part off what you're going to cut. So that blade there will cut to the centre and we've got all this bit of blade here doing nothing other than create an overhang. So we need to shorten the blade. The blade's held in with four allen keys or four allen bolts. Slide it in until the tool holder there is just missing the job. And we've got enough blade sticking out to part it off. So not wasting any blade poking out in the space, causing problems with overhang. Next thing is to get this set nice and square to the job. By square to the job, I mean at 90 degrees to the job, 90 degrees in there. So it's not like that, it's not like that, it's dead square into the job. One of the easiest ways of doing it on a piece of bar that's already been machined is to simply leave the nut loose on the tool post, wind that in, till it's touching then lock that up and that sets you up nice and square to the job another way put a set square on the chuck once again we'll loosen that off so it can move like that bring it in until it's all touching tighten it up in 90 degrees to the job can't be anything else next we'll come on to cutting speeds if I was machining this, this is 30mm mild steel bar, I'd machine that probably at 1000 rpm. For parting off, I'd probably use 200 rpm. You're talking about surface speed, and you must remember as you get closer to the centre, the surface speed reduces. Obviously the outside's running faster than the inside. Well, it's not running faster, but the surface speed's greater. So we're going to try this at 200 rpm. 
I don't normally put a power feed on when I'm parting off, I normally feed in by hand. I do use lubricant. I sometimes use water, flood, coolant lubricant, but not when I'm taking videos. So all I'm going to use is a little bit of cutting paste in a paint brush and just dab a little bit on, a little bit of this paste on and that will lubricate the job. Okay, so we start things up that is doing 200 RPM. Wind the tool in, it starts to cut. Keep a nice even pressure on the tool. It just starts cutting, going back off. It starts to make a horrible noise, there's two things you can do. You can back off, or you can wind it in some more. And normally winding it a little bit more, takes away the chatter and allows it to part off. It's much better to design a, a job with a hole through there. It's easier parting off into a hole than it is a solid centre. Just about there. Now listen for funny noises. So that was fairly painless. Next we'll try a high speed tool. We'll try this one. So the tool post is already set up square. Ready to make sure that this is on centre height. And there's not quite enough blade for true note to part it off, so we'll have to adjust the blade. You want enough to do the job, no more. With this type of blade, you can loosen off your tool post again and set that up so that that's touching. I want you to notice the end of the blade. The end of the blade has been cut at an angle or ground at an angle, like that. It's got a few degrees of tape on. So it's going to cut on this corner of the tool first. Which means when you come to break through, the part that parts off won't have a pip on. The little pip, if there is a one, will be left on the piece of stock. I hope that makes sense to you. Right, so I'll have a go with this one. This is quite a broad blade, we'll give it a go on the same speed. See how it's starting to cut on one side of the tool, now it's cutting full width. And we'll get a little bit of chatter there. And all I did was increase the feed pressure. Keep the move going. It is taking a very broad cut because it's a broad blade. Right, so it's left the pit on that part of the job. This is the smaller high speed steel blade and on the end of that, that's been ground to like a point. It's not something I've done, that's the way the blade came. It's like a generic sort of import high speed steel blade. We'll give that one a try. Once again, exactly the same speed, same lubricant, see what sort of result we get with that. It doesn't feel as nice as the one I've grown, but it's certainly cutting all right. Give a nice even pressure on it. The chips are curling off quite nicely. It's starting to make some nasty sort of noises. Taking 
quite a bit more force to drive the tool in. Once again, it has parted off and that one's actually left a little pip on both sides. I hope you enjoyed that short video. I hope it helped you in some way. If there's anything you'd like us to cover, just send us an email, ask me, even if it's up there. I've got a big list of things that people want us to cover. Um, not forgetting that I'm a machinist, I'm just a mechanic that pisses about. But I seem to piss about not too bad and people seem to like the way I talk and the way I demonstrate things. So anyway, so if you like what you see, please click the subscribe button. Anyway, thanks for watching.